Lynn. I'm a teacher here in Silicon Valley. I've been teaching coding for about a year and a half, seven different coding platforms for kids, and I want to share my very favorite one with you. It's by far my favorite. It's called Code World, and it's based on a language called Haskell, which is a functional programming language that a bunch of guys from MIT created. And the reason I swear by this one is because kids learn algebra. It's a really logical language. And kids learn algebra at the same time as they're being super creative, creating um, pictures, animations, video games from a blank canvas. And I think schools are so hungry for venues of expression for kids these days. And in this platform, you learn algebra, coding, and art at the same time. There's a lot of syntax because you're actually writing out your own code. So you'll have to be patient as you learn that. It'll take you the first two or three lessons before you really have it down. So be patient with your mistakes, be excited about your creations, and you'll see how fun it can be to code and how expressive you can be and how liberating it is. And I hope you stick with it. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. I'll put my email at the end of the video and let's get started. Lesson one is gonna be on functions and parameters and by the end of this video, you'll be able to write your first program. First, open up a tab and type in code.world. You don't need .com, .org, or anything else, just code.world. This will take you directly to the screen where you write your code and see the results. The left side of the screen is your editor. This is where you type your code and write your programs. The other side of it is the canvas, where your drawing or animation will pop up when you run it. Run is in the bottom right hand corner. Once you write your code, push run and your program will pop up on your canvas. On the bottom left is where you sign in with a Gmail account, which allows you to save and share the programs you'll be writing. I think you have to be over 18 to have a Gmail account, so if you don't, have your parents open you one. After we write our first program, you'll save it and it will list it on the left. You can see all my saved programs here. All right, let's get coding. In the editor, write main equals drawing of parenthesis code world logo parenthesis and hit run. When you're coding, keep in mind that computer programming is very picky. Your program will not work if you leave out a parenthesis or misspell a word or capitalize the wrong letters. So pay attention to exactly what you're typing and write it exactly like it is on my screen. For the most part, spacing doesn't affect your program, but you might notice that we don't put spaces between words and that the subsequent word is capitalized instead. This is called camel case because of the humps sticking up throughout your code. Okay, you should be looking at the Code World logo. You just wrote your first program. If you got an error message, go back and double check all your spelling, punctuation, and capitals. Make sure your program looks exactly like the one I showed you. When you make an error in your code, you will see a pink screen and what is called an error message. I want everyone to see this, so if your program is running, erase the last parentheses and push run. Now you have a pink screen that gives you an error message. You will see the screen a lot as you learn to code, and even after you're an expert, it's totally okay. You may be worried that you're going to break your program or crash your computer. I promise this isn't going to happen. Now let's look at the error message and see what it's telling us. It gives us the line and column number of the error. Then it says, parse error, possibly incorrect indentation or mismatched brackets. Parse error means that there is a punctuation problem. Either you spelled something wrong, forgot a bracket or comma, or something like that. In this case, it tells you specifically that you either have incorrect indentation or mismatched brackets, and the parentheses are brackets. So we add it, push run, and the problem solved. Now you've just run your first program and you are officially an engineer. Let's understand what the program's saying now. All coding starts by opening your program. In Code World, the starting point for all programs is main equals. When you type main equals drawing of, you've told the computer that the main thing you are going to do is write a program and that the program will be a drawing. The equal signs means is, just like in math. If you write two plus two equals four, it's the same thing as saying two plus two is four. If you read the whole program as an English sentence, it would say, the main thing I want is a drawing of the Code World logo. Drawing of, with parentheses, indicates that your program will be a drawing of something. Drawing of is a function. A function turns something into something else. In this case, drawing of is a function that will turn your program into a drawing. Think of functions like they're machines. You put something into the function machine and something else comes out. 
You wrote Code World logo into the machine and a drawing of the Code World logo came out. The thing that you put into the machine, inside the parentheses, is called a parameter. In this example, Code World logo is the parameter. The parameter gives specific information to the function. Parameters go inside parentheses. These red punctuation marks are parentheses. There are always two in a set and they must always face each other. I like to think of them as buddies that can't be without each other and are always facing in, hugging the parameter. To summarize, a function is like a machine. It is followed by parentheses that hold information about what it will do. That information is called the parameter. The parameter runs through the function and becomes something else. Here to illustrate this concept is 12-year-old artist Jonas. Isn't that awesome? I could watch artists all day, which is why I love Code World, because you get to be an artist through coding. All right, let's write a new program. If you want to save that program, make sure you signed in. Now click the Save As button on the left-hand side. Code World will ask you for a name. Let's call it My First Program. Click OK, and it's saved. Now we want to start a new program, so click the New button on the left-hand side. Type main equals drawing of, circle 5, and press Run. You should see a circle or an error message telling you what to fix. As a side note, you should have started a new program on a clean page. You should never have two mains. There was only one main for the whole program. If you have two definitions for main, the computer will tell you so in an error message and ask you to remove one of them before it runs your program. In this program, drawing of is a function and circle five is the parameter. Let's experiment. What happens when you change the number a little? What's the largest you can make this number and still fit the circle on the screen? What happens if you make it a little larger than that? What's the smallest you can make this number? I'm going to start with circle 5, but then I'm going to change it to 2 and see what happens. As you see, my circle gets smaller. Now I'll change it to 10. My circle fills the entire screen. You can also use decimals. You just have to make sure there's a 0 in the ones place. So here I put 0 0.4 and get a tiny circle in the middle. Here's 6.5, which puts it right between 6 and 7. So as you probably noticed, that number is the radius of the circle, or how big it is from the middle of the circle to the outside of the circle. In Code World, we measure the radius using a coordinate plane, which is what you're looking at now. A coordinate plane has a horizontal line, which is called the x-axis. The middle of the x-axis is zero. If you count up by one unit increments, it counts from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way to 10. And if you go negative x, you go backwards. It goes from negative one, negative two, negative three. The vertical axis is called the y-axis. And again, that one starts in the middle at zero and counts up by one unit increments to 10 and you count down in negative increments, negative one, negative two, negative three, all the way to negative 10. And again, you can use decimals, so I could put negative 3.5 on the y-axis and it would bring it down to in between the negative three and the negative four number. For example, if I'm creating a circle with the radius of three, I would start right in the middle at zero, zero. Then I would count one, two, three units to the right on the x-axis, and there's the radius of the circle. That means it goes also one, two, three units to the left and on the top and on the bottom. So the radius all the way around is three units. If I wanted to make a radius of seven, I would count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven units to all the way around the circle. And I would have a circle with a radius of seven all the way around. Some options for circle parameters are eight. You could do one eighth. Uh, you can do fractions to make a tiny circle. You can do decimals, make sure you have a zero in the ones place, so 0 0.45. If you just put 0.45, it won't work. What you cannot do is just write circle, because the computer doesn't know how big to make it, or circle big, it's not specific enough, or circle blue, I'll teach you how to do colors later. And if you have two parameters, two and four, like you do for rectangle, you're gonna get an error message. There's only one parameter, which is the radius. If you notice in this example, drawing of is a function and circle five is the parameter. 
So the machine makes drawings of something, and the circle 5 is the parameter which tells it what the drawing is of. But if you look at this another way, circle is also a function, like a machine that draws circles. And 5 is the parameter that tells the circle function how big to make the circle. So the word circle serves both as a parameter and a function, and this is called nesting. In case that was confusing, let's break it down a little more. So circle is a function. It has an open and closed parenthesis that the parameter goes into. The parameter is 5 because we're going to give it a radius of 5. So circle is the function, 5 is the parameter. Then we can take that entire phrase, circle 5, and make it a parameter of drawing of. So drawing of is also a function, and it has an open and closed parenthesis that the parameter goes in. And we're going to take that whole phrase, circle 5, and drop it in as the parameter. So now circle 5 becomes the parameter for drawing of. Circle serves as both a function and a parameter. So nesting means functions within other functions. Another way of looking at it is that it gets more and more specific. So let's use ice cream as an example, because who doesn't love ice cream? By the way, this will not run on your computer, it's just an example. But if I had ice cream as the function, I want to tell it what kind is uh, of ice cream to make. Ice cream is the machine. So I have my open parenthesis, my closed parenthesis, and inside I'm going to say I want to make Dutch chocolate ice cream. But chocolate is also a function, and it needs a parameter. I need to tell it which kind of chocolate to make, and that parameter is going to be Dutch. So in this example, chocolate, Dutch, serves as a parameter for ice cream, and Dutch serves as a parameter for chocolate. Let's play around with an example. Type in your editor main equals drawing of rectangle with a parameter of 2 for the width and 4 for the length. Experiment with it for a little bit. What happens if you switch the numbers, the 2 and the 4? So the first number is the x, how wide it is on your screen, how wide it is on the x-axis. And the second number is on the y-axis, how tall it is going up and down. Let's learn how to make words. Words require quotation marks in their parameter. These are quotation marks. Type main equals drawing of, so drawing of is the function. The parameter is going to be text and whatever it is that you want to write. So text is the function and the parameter in this case is hello within quotation marks. And then you close the whole program with another parenthesis. Play around with that and you can write some different words and, and uh, just make sure it's always within parentheses. Now let's do a review challenge of everything we've learned so far. See if you can find the error in this program. Did you get it? The closing parenthesis for the drawing of function was missing. Find the error in this program. Rectangles need two numbers, a length and a width, in their parameter. That one only had one, which is how circles are drawn, but rectangles need two. How about this one? There was no camel case. We need to capitalize to separate words, so the O needs to be capitalized in the drawing of function. Now you'll learn how to add multiple elements to your drawing at the same time. The way we do this is with a symbol called the ampersand. It means and, and to type it you push shift 7 on most computers. Type and run this program. Drawing of, open parentheses, circle 3, ampersand, rectangle with parameter of 6, 6, ampersand, text, parentheses, make sure you have your quotation marks, write your name, close the text function and close your program, your drawing of function. As you can see, we have all three elements. We have a rectangle. A square is just a rectangle with equal sides. A circle and some text in the middle. Notice that when you started writing your code and adding all these elements, your line of code can get pretty long and hard to read. If we want to begin a new line, you can push enter anywhere and continue it on the next line, 
but you have to indent, you have to leave a space. I recommend putting the ampersand on the next line and starting with your function there so that all your ampersands line up. It makes your code cleaner and easier to read. But you can do it however you want, whatever feels comfortable for you, as long as you're continuing on that same function. Here's a challenge for you. Try to create the image on the screen exactly like it is. Push pause and resume the video when you're ready. It's main equals drawing of a circle with a radius of one, ampersand, a rectangle with a width of two and a height of 10, and another rectangle with a width of 10 and a height of two. Now try to create this design. A helpful hint is to use copy and paste if you know how. You can copy one circle or the rectangle and paste it over and over again, and then just change the parameters. Hopefully you got your own version of it. Here's how I wrote my code. Keep in mind that you can leave spaces wherever you want. Uh, I left spaces between the drawing of function, the circle function, and the text function so you could see those clearly, but it's not mandatory that you do that. The only thing that's mandatory is that you have an indentation before each line because you're continuing the same function, the drawing of function. So until you're done with that, all your multiple lines need to be indented. To complete lesson one, you're going to design your own name tag. You can add as many circles, rectangles, or as much text as you want to. Just be creative with it and have fun.